Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Harlequin Coho here, and today I just want to take a look at the new map, Beach Assault. This was a map that was just recently released by Relic. Uh, it was not actually a full patch or anything like that. I, I guess apparently we already had this map, uh, but it was just activated and turned on for ladder play. So this is a one versus one map. Uh, it is themed exactly like Normandy, and uh, if you are used uh, to the uh, original single player game campaign and that sort of thing. It looks exactly like uh, the first the first map on the single player campaign. You can kind of recognize some of these cliffs and the paths up there. It's, it's not exactly the same map, but it's very similar and it has been modified uh, for multiplayer play. So let's take a look around the map first off and just get a feel for where things are and what's going on here. We're going to look at the overhead map. You can see it has three capture points and uh, both uh, players start off kind of shifted to one side. Uh, you can see we've got one spawning point here, one spawning point here, and uh, uh, these three capture points. Each player has a fuel depot uh, to the left and the right of them, a medium one here and a low one here, and then there is a single low point all the way up at the top of the map here. So really just three fuel points for everybody, uh, and the name of the game is just to kind of capture that sort of stuff. But what you can see is, is just looking at these little lines all over the map here, there is just a network of trenches all over the place. Uh, this is clearly supposed to look like uh, Normandy Beach, Omaha uh, style map. And uh, so let's take a look and see what each one of these flags looks like. So down here on the beach, you can see the first flag. Uh, the first flag is really, really exposed, as well as uh, some of the points around it are. And uh, the one major thing to note here is, first off, notice next to the base, uh, you've got this huge cliff, and you've got a long winding road to get down here. So this fuel point is actually very far away from your base, even though it's right next to it. Second thing that's important to note is that this capture point uh, is sitting in this zone controlled by this uh, uh, medium munitions point. And if you look at the overhead map, this medium munitions point actually extends. It has a nice little long road kind of that extends all the way around. So if you control this medium munitions point, uh, it cuts off all of these other fuel points. So just by grabbing this one, you isolate both of these fuel points. So if you own one of them, that's fine. If your opponent owns both of them, you will cut them off instantly by grabbing that point. So uh, nice thing to note there. Uh, otherwise, we work our way up here, and you will see that the second uh, sorry, the second victory point is kind of located in the central fortress area. There are lots of little... Uh, just a network, a little labyrinth of lots of uh, trenches and whatnot all around this area here. Uh, and that is kind of the one that's directly in between both bases. As you can see, the front of both bases kind of lead directly into this area here. Uh, likely a lot of firing, uh, a lot of fighting is going to happen right in the center of the map here. And the final capture point is all the way up here. It's like a little isolated fortress. You can see as I zoom around it, uh, it's, up on a, it's up on a hill. There's just a few little tiny, tiny, very narrow paths leading up into it and lots of little uh, entrenched positions. There's kind of a back area here where you could drive a tank up. Uh, same thing with the side area here, uh, and that that's it. It's got two fuel points on either side of it. These are both low fuel points, and uh, pretty much that's about it. Otherwise, everybody else has kind of a backyard. Uh, these areas are freebies and nice kind of open, pleasant areas like you would normally see on normal maps. So let's take a look at our players. First off, on the left-hand side of the map here today, I'm going to go ahead and switch it over. We have uh, Sergeant 3, who's going to be playing as our armor commander. Uh, looks like he's still leveling his abilities. I'll get this uh, replay started here. Um, he does have uh, self-repair and Calliope. I, I guess if you're starting as an armor commander, those are both awesome uh, awesome abilities. I recommend them both. Uh, you can see he's going to go ahead and go into a barracks right away. Meanwhile, let me jump all the way across the map, and we do have Oberst Dane down here. Now, Oberst Dane is a regular forum user, Imperial Dane, and uh, you can see he's getting his Wehrmacht quarters up and uh, got his pioneers moving on out. The pioneers do have the rifle upgrade. And, uh, yep. So, the name of the game here... Uh, I want to see replays of this map. So this is just kind of an average replay. It was the first one I got my hands on. But really, I want you guys to send me replays of uh, Beach Assault. I want to know what you think the balances are like. I want to know if you find out gimmicky, glitchy things, if you find out uh, imbalances on the map, and whatnot. Right now, uh, today is January 15th. So please, send me some games. By the way, if it's two months in the future, uh, future Harlequin does not care about this map anymore. So like, if you're watching this on demand many months in the future, stop sending me this replay. I don't care anymore. I'm too busy uh, paying attention to our reptilian overlords. But uh, for the time being right now, again, today is January 15th. If you have some interesting replays of Beach Assault, please send them to me because I'm, I'm curious to see what's out there. Uh, just by the looks of this map, I, I can hypothesize that this is a very... Um, 
a very German favored map here. You can see that there are just so many myriad positions where you can easily nest a Fatherland HMG team and just kind of gun down hapless allies early game that I, I think uh, Axis are going to have a very easy time getting a strong grip on this map. But I want to see games that contradict that and games that support that. If, if you have something interesting with this map, please send it to me, Beach Assault, HarlequinCoho at gmail.com, but all that stuff is available on my uh, on my channel on YouTube. So. Let's take a look here. So Oberus Dane, by the way, has uh, decreased reinforcement cost by 30%, 9% accuracy, and 24% squad health for the Volks Grenadiers. You can tell that he's decided, uh, as a result of his army items, to open up with just Volks Grenadiers. We don't have him using any heroes or anything like that because he wants these items to be uh, important to early game. And as you can see, uh, poor Sergeant 3 does not have any uh, items at all for his riflemen, and he's already taken a single casualty, now a second casualty before the Volks Grenadiers have even taken one. 24% uh, additional squad health for Volks Grenadiers. That is a purple item, an epic level item. Really awesome uh, ability there. Just taking their first casualty, but clearly these guys are going to win this initial encounter here. Let's take a look around. You can see uh, that it looks like Oberstein came down here and grabbed this munitions point first and then backed up to get his fuel point. Uh, and in the interim, uh, Sergeant 3 did the exact opposite, grabbing his own fuel point and now grabbing the middle, uh, thus leaving Dane disconnected. As you can see by the little blinking strip here, uh, that's exactly what I was talking about. So let's check out this little fighting here at the beginning again. Pretty much this is only uh, tons and tons and tons of Volksgrandeurs. Volksgrandeurs versus Riflemen. All day, every day, and the Volksgrandeurs have a supreme advantage simply because of their army items. Uh, so no surprise whatsoever that Oberstein is going to win this initial encounter, and Sergeant 3 is going to have to back off. Uh, it's worth noting, by the way, that Sergeant 3 is in that classic position of an early game armor player who just kind of has to survive by his wits alone until hopefully he can get a Calliope out of the field. That's pretty much going to be his only game plan right now. Uh, so we'll have to see if that works out for him. You can see, however, he is standing his ground against these rifle-bearing uh, pioneers and just kind of chasing them away using these little grease guns that the engineers have. And uh, they do a pretty good job, but as soon as the uh, couple of Volksgrandeers show up, they do have to retreat. So Volksgrandeers and Pioneers are going to be able to grab this whole area now. Uh, meanwhile, Oberstein not even hesitating to push forward. As soon as he gets even the slightest advantage, he's moving forward and capping positions. I do like that. And then backing away, you know. Uh, he tries aggressively to capture these points, but if it's not going to happen, he instantly walks away. That's uh, good, good reflexes there. And meanwhile, just a lot of uh, a lot of noodling going around in uh, all aspects of this map here. So Pioneers way up top capping the fuel. Meanwhile, we've got the Engineers back capping a little bit and uh, continual fighting. And here's what I wanted to see, a nice centrally placed HMG team. Uh, there are so many wonderful little places. I mean, like this could hold an HMG team. You could stack an HMG team back here. You could stack them over here. I mean, there's just, w I, I want to see all the possibilities for this map yet. And, and uh, clearly that's not going to happen with one game. But like I said, uh, if it's within a couple of weeks of this post, please send me any interesting replays you get on this particular map. So, uh, looks like Oberstame's tenacity has paid off. He was able to cap that forward position here. And now backing off to being covered by his HMG team. Uh, these riflemen are doomed. Uh, they are completely pinned in this trench, directly in the line of fire. Gonna have to retreat. That was unfortunately a very poor move by Sergeant 3. I think he uh, just did not see that or didn't detect that they were there or something to that effect. Uh, but meanwhile, it looks like Oberstein has got pretty solid map control here. Uh, you can see he does have these uh, three Volksfinders are just kind of prowling around in the backfield. Uh, I kind of expected him to cap some of these munitions points, but it looks like he's got other things planned. Uh, perhaps he's trying to defend his uh, poor pioneers who are up here trying to hold on to these fuel depots. You can see that once again, this forward capping point here on the map, uh, this little uh, this little strategic point, whoops, <laughs> it looks like I jumped out of my map here. Uh, just capturing that isolates the fuel. So uh, the kind of theme for this map is everybody gets one fuel, the one that's right adjacent to their base. And other than that, uh, you can always isolate each of the double fuels on the top and bottom of the map there. So kind of an interesting dynamic, uh, worth being aware of if you've never seen this map or never played on it before. Uh, hopefully that'll help you out a little bit there. Heavy machine gun team still standing its ground in the middle. I like this, uh, like this line of fire. Uh, looking pretty good. And meanwhile, it looks like Sergeant 3 went ahead and back tech to a weapon support center. Uh, I would expect that having bumped into a machine gun and feeling like there's no way he could possibly approach it with riflemen, which is not a bad, not a bad reaction. I think that's very true. Uh, I suspect that he's just going to be going for a sniper right now to try and help uh, poke a hole through that defense. So uh, nothing yet for him. Let's take a look at Oberstein. Oberstein is getting his Krieg barracks up right now, and meanwhile just kind of reinforcing some of his units. And uh, for the time being, just kind of holding strong in the middle here. You can see uh, just a wonderful field of fire. And now, 
Sergeant 3 has got the right idea here. He knows that if you're going to attack a machine gun, you need to flank it. These guys are in heavy cover and they are uh, soaking up the shots. Meanwhile, the second squad of riflemen comes around trying to put some pressure on this uh, HMD team. Fortunately, the HMD team is in pretty decent cover as well and is able just to kind of back off, supported by the Volksgrenadiers. HMG team now in a nice uh, rear position firing on these riflemen. Riflemen are in very heavy cover though, so this is kind of advantageous for them now. Second squad of riflemen coming around to flank once again. Really good moves here. This is exactly the sort of thing you need to beat a machine gun team is coordinated uh, squads. And uh, now you can see that it looks like Oberstein has gone ahead and fired up uh, his infantry pillage. He is getting healed uh, from getting kills. That's looking pretty well for him. And uh, this last squad of riflemen is all that remains for Sergeant 3. Sergeant 3 is going to hold his ground, but he's definitely outgunned. Honestly, if I were him, I would back up to here or back up to here. You know, stay in the area, but don't keep fighting. Because, uh, well, look at that. He took, out a, he took out a pioneer squad. So making me eat my own words. Uh, no problem there. And it looks like uh, Oberstein laid a single landmine down here just to guard this point. And man, did that just kill one, two, three riflemen? I think it did. Uh, could have been a wounded rifleman squad, but definitely that mine paid for itself right there. 